Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Hex Harky. This is a very interesting 4X deck building card draw kind of game. It's interesting, it's very strange, it's very cool, and most importantly, there's actually a Kickstarter going on for the game right now. Now, they had originally approached me to do a sponsored video on the game, but I actually had played it before they contacted me, and I like this game so much that I'm doing this. Uh, there's no sponsorship. I just, I am promoting it because I think it's a great game. It's rare to see a game that really innovates and does so in a really interesting way. Uh, you can get the game for $15 off the Kickstarter, or you could pay 30 to start playing it right now. So, you know, if you want to try out an interesting 4X game, make sure you do check out that Kickstarter. Anyway, let's go ahead and just like start a game. I'm going to play on like a completely medium, normal type game. Uh, and and I'll, I'll go through and I'll explain what's happening and what we can do and what's going on in the game. Because I've played a decent amount now. I've probably put about four or five hours into the game. And there are definitely things about the game that I don't like. Um, but there are things that are really, really, really cool. So we're going to be playing as China here, and China's unique card is the Organized Labor card, which will allow us to draw three cards and get plus one gold. Uh, so the first thing you have to do when you load into a game is kind of take stock of your starting location. Uh, it looks like this is where we're starting, and we can pick a place to put our capital city. Now, we're starting off with the Fishing and Mysticism cards in our hand. Um, which might shape where we might want to put our capital city. I kind of wish I had agriculture right now because I have uh, some really, really good pasture tiles and also access to things like stone over here, marble. Resources are very, very important here. So I'm going to pick a starting location. Ideally, when you put down your first city, you want to have a tile you can work right away. And I think this sheep tile and this horse tile are both really high quality. And then I'm not too far away from that marble, which is a good late game resource. And I'm still coastal if I want to do coastal trade. So I'll pop a city right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a scout so that I can do a little bit of exploration because I would like to pick up this hut over here. Picking up the hut will give you a random bonus. I think I'm also going to play Organized Labor just so I can draw. And next turn, I would like to play Agriculture to get a to get a pasture because I'm starting on horses here so I'll go ahead and end that turn having access to early horses might be really really powerful for me and the city's already grown uh, and you win by accumulating 100 victory points by the way as uh, or after 30 turns there's two sort of quote-unquote time limits on the game I would like to settle, but maybe not this turn. What I'm going to do is take this settler card and put it into my inventory and this is basically allowing me to save a card for later uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell my scout to grab this hut. And how units move in this game is everyone's units moves at the same time at the end of your turn. So it's kind of you 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 set all your units to move and then they go rather than having to like pick the order that they move or what, you know, the things will play out and units can stack on the same tile and stuff. So pretty interesting things. Uh, and you could also destroy cards. This strength card is quite powerful. Um, I have three technology cards in my hand, and you can see it says two production or one science. That means if I have a science resource, I can actually play this without using production. Right now I have only production, and I'm going to go ahead and play agriculture, which will unlock four new cards for my deck. Horseback riding, the hanging gardens, pastures, and farms. And right now I'm more interested in pastures. So that used up two of my uh, production, and gave me this pasture card and then put the other ones into my discard pile. So when you when you research a technology, you get a card, essentially. Um, and I'm interested in picking up food from this sheep because I can use that food to spawn a settler uh, a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and get the sheep going. And that will upgrade the tile with plus one production. And now it'll also start producing food resources, which is quite handy. Now, do I want to keep woodworking in my inventory or do I want to keep riding? Riding is good for tacking. I might keep woodworking. Just because having the option to do that would be nice. So I end my turn. Uh, I discard all my hand. I pick up some free resources here. Very nice. Picked up a bunch of food and horses. And we picked up another two. Oh, sheep are actually luxuries. I thought they were food. That's kind of interesting. Uh, so your city has two tracks. It has its food track and it's a luxury track. It's happiness. Uh, you need to harvest food to fill up the food bar. When the food bar fills, you get another population. And the happiness bar is drained by how many population you have. And so you can put luxury resources into your city to make it happier. And the lower the happiness, you get penalties to your yields. And if you overfeed a city with happiness, you have a percentage chance to get a victory point and a little bit of culture. So that's what happened there. 
Now, we drew our pastor again, and this is actually fantastic. Um, I think I would like to... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and build a settler that'll use up one of the population of my city. Then I'll put a food into the city, boom, to get it back up to two population. And then I'm going to play the pasture because that'll give me another production next turn to play around with. Um, I don't see a lot of fishing resources here. So I'm extremely tempted. I'm extremely tempted. Oh, wait, no, I can't do it that way, can I? I have to actually research fishing. I mean, theoretically, here's what I could do. Uh, fishing huts are so good for gathering luxuries is the problem. So maybe I'll play woodworking. And I'll take slavery. Okay. I'll play woodworking, take slavery, play the enslaved population card, but then just save that for next turn and put a food into my city. And then the enslaved population card will allow me to burn a pop to get extra production and money. So, has its own benefits there. So, it looks like Rome is to our left. We may want to settle in the direction of Rome. Um, there's some okay resources in this area. I'm thinking we could settle, like, here, off the coast. I want to avoid coast this game. I, I know I have my, my capital on coast. Um, let's send our scout up to the north. Want to figure out more about the world? Nice. We found another couple of cities. And you'll notice we're all very, very close together. Like, we're, it's all, we're all very much in on top of each other. So we're up to eight victory points. We've got a lot of tech in our hand this round. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and draw some cards because I don't see anything. Ah, there's organized labor. Let's play organized labor so we can draw a bunch of extra cards. We can maybe make some more decisions. Okay, I actually need to just keep drawing cards. Mm. I really need a warehouse in here. Let's move my settler over to here. This looks like a pretty reasonable spot. It doesn't get me any new resources, but it has like reasonably good tiles. Like it has like a three fruit tile, it has a couple of forests, it has plains. It's just like an okay spot. Uh, let's see, masonry. If I were to play masonry, that would get me mines and roads. Um, I don't think I need mines and roads right now. It would be nice to have axemen, they're really, really good uh, early game fighters. And I theoretically, if I were to do that, I could burn this guy. This I could guess I could skip warriors, right? Here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... I'm going to burn the warrior, boom, play masonry, pick up the axeman, store the axeman. I'm going to sell the horses on the market, which other players can buy because I don't need horses right now. Um, I'm going to enslave in my capital, boom, and now I've got 11 hammers to play with. I could continue to draw what I really want to draw is the warehouse let me let me just draw hard here there's another enslave i guess i guess you can only do that once per turn i'll save that i guess and spend two luxuries of my capital i could build the hanging gardens that's not a bad use of my production and my gold so i will build that now that will use up this city's ability to build something this turn i could put a farm on this high yield berry tile and I think I will, like so. And I'm going to store the scout so, so I can destroy it next turn. I don't think I need another scout. Although scouts kind of can gather for you. They can be... I, you know what? I'll store the scout and then I'll either build one or get rid of them. So I'll store the scout. I could go for God King here. Yeah, let's go for God King. Oh, I can't play it. Um... Whoops, wish I could undo that now. Yeah, I made some mistakes, it's okay. Um, but when I end my turn, uh, cities can only build one thing at a time. That's why I'm digging for the warehouse card, because that lets your cities build two things at a time. So it's like a major upgrade. Um, it means you can like build a unit and a building in the same turn. All right, looks like we're up to 13 points. We've got another enslave, which is good. Basically, we want to be enslaving every turn in our capital, if we can. So we enslave, that gets us a bunch of gold. We're going to settle another city, boom. Now, settling a city, new cities, they use gold. So it's usually a good idea to build a road between your cities if you can. So that'd be six production that way. That's four that way. Six that way. I think a four production road here, I think, is a reasonable thing to build. So these cities are connected now. Uh, and that should mean that this city uh, won't have as much supply issues. 
it would be nice to keep a mine. I'm going to put two food into Shanghai because that'll allow me to build a unit. And I'm going to get a scout because scouts can be used to harvest resources like citizens can be. And then I want to move the worker in this city maybe onto the temple. Or do I want to just gather food? Maybe gathering food is the move. Can I draw a warehouse? No, I got a pasture. I'll save the pasture. 60% chance for victory points. Nice, we got a victory point from spending a luxury. I'll save the mine for next turn. And then I'll just build an, I'll build an Axeman. So we're going for a low pop early game. But having an Axeman now opens up some early game uh, aggression, exploration, defense options. Now they will use gold, unfortunately. Um, so I don't want to go too hard on them. I could destroy the archer. Hmm, we'll see. Uh, let's end our turn. A little scout man doing some good work. So I'll probably go to like maybe three or four cities this game based on my land. I don't think I would go for more than that. Okay, my cities are growing. They're happy. We, we're getting so many horses right now. Uh, maybe a horse. Maybe going for horseback riding might be the play. All right, nice. Now, we are getting money, I think, from people buying the resources we're putting in. We did get the warehouse, so that's big. It'll also allow us to store more resources, and we got a granary. So warehouse granary in the capital here feels really, really based. And I can still get a settler. So I think we'll go warehouse, granary. The granary will give our capital city plus one population and allow it to grow faster. I probably should have shown you what those cards do. Um... I'm, I'm probably not showing off the game perfectly here, but I really, really like it. It's really, really cool. Ah, I can I could build the pyramids by buying stone off the market. That's actually a good point. It would only cost me nine gold for stone. And then that would make the pyramids much cheaper, but I would have to destroy something. Maybe I can draw something that I don't care about. Oh, please. I don't care about the Mamluk. I'm going to go ahead and destroy the Mamluk. That will give me two hammers and a science. I can use the two hammers plus the two stone that I bought to build the pyramids. And the pyramids will reduce the growth cost of borders for all of my cities and give me three culture in the city, which will allow the borders to expand faster. And five victory points. So boom. We just built the pyramids. Um, and I could still build a settler. I'm going to... I would like to bank that settler. Let's just distribute luxuries. Uh, and then bank the settler because I'd like to do that next turn. Is there anything else I want to bank? I'd like to bank labor. And I'll put two food into Shanghai so that'll grow next turn. I could research fishing. <sighs> Shanghai is working water tiles. Which I don't love, but like water tiles aren't the worst, right? They're one food, two gold, which kind of makes up for the fact. So yeah, I think I'm going to go fishing and grab fishing huts. And save that for next turn. Uh, let's harvest with the scout. Oh, I can't do that because I used all my production. So I might be able to snipe this city with my axemen. So I'm going to give that an attempt. Because if I snipe a city this early, like it's a huge win. It's not a very good city, but it is like in a relatively defensible place. Um, but if it's completely open to an axeman attack, like easy, easy clap, right? Nice, nice, nice. Uh, player gets 100 points. So we're up to 38 points. We're on turn seven. And um, we have a full hand. Okay, we're drawing a full eight cards. Let's grab this guy. And we're going to attack this city. So you have a bunch of commands here. The DUI probably has a little bit of work that it needs. Um, but it's fairly functional. Like, it's fine. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, use the attack command to attack the city. This unit has eight combat strength. And the scout in the city has one. So I should do eight damage and take one, which will leave me on seven. So unit health is their damage, essentially. So very, very simplified combat. So the granary immediately adds one population and the city will keep half its stored food when it grows. So granary is really, really good for growing lots of population. And of course, population lets you work more tiles. It does use up more luxuries. But uh, more population is score. I'm going to use a scout to harvest sheep, which should give me two more sheep here because I'm, I'm having actually trouble keeping my luxuries up. And you can see here, if I hover over this, I'm losing 20% of my yields in the city, which is a penalty of four food. So I want to be feeding luxuries into these cities to keep them happy. And I actually just got access to the monument as well, which will give plus one happiness and culture to all cities within two hexes. So I'm going to put a monument 
in between these two cities to give them plus one happiness. And you should see the, the three red markers around these yellow pips, one of them will go away for each city. So these cities are now happier and they're also generating more culture. And culture lets you expand your borders. Uh, I'll use two food to get a settler. That'll lower the city's population. And then I will also use three production to get a um, to get a granary in Shanghai, which will allow me to more aggressively chop out population. I'll save organized labor. I'll save fishing huts. And maybe axemen aren't obsolete yet for me. It'd be good to have axemen in the bank. I'm going to sell off my horses because I haven't a use for them yet. Um, and then let's go ahead and end the turn. Continuing to explore. Boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> so this is kind of like a lunch break 4X, really. Uh, that has like a really interesting card mechanic. So it looks like we managed to kill. And now we own the city. Or rather, we're on the city. And now we have to claim the city. So you have plenty of time to kind of clap back if somebody's being aggressive. We might even be able to grab Antium here. Now, the danger of mass expanding is that your cities get really, really expensive the further from your capital they are, and also for a lack of roads. We have a bunch of cards in our hand. Like if we check our maintenance here, this city is costing me three maintenance. This warrior is costing me two maintenance. And you can see the way these supply lines are how the, the, the supply lines are figured out. So uh, let's go ahead and claim the city with the claim territory card. Boom. Heliopolis is now mine, which, you know, claims me a bit of land. It's going to be a bit of trouble in here. Um, in terms of happiness and loyalty and all those sorts of things. So I'm going to have to play a little bit by ear. I need to I need to increase my production. So metal working here would give me access to workshops, which might allow me to do something is... Let's enslave a pop in... Well, first things first, we're going to feed Beijing so that we get it back up to five pop and then we'll enslave and then we'll feed it again. Boom. So we just, we're bouncing, we're pop bouncing. It's kind of like a little little strategy that I do sometimes. I could put a warehouse in Shanghai. I think I'm a little bit concerned about the happiness in here. So building a unit might be a good move to lower the population and thus the luxury requirements. Um, I don't see any resources. Oh, we do. We actually have access to marble here. So I'm going to go ahead and build a mine on that marble so that we can get one marble per turn. It'll also add plus one production. I could organize labor and draw some cards. Let's draw some cards. Access to the scout. I'm going to go ahead and destroy the scout because I don't need it anymore. And that'll get me a science point uh, to use for future technology. I'd love to do horseback riding because I have a lot of horses. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put horseback riding as a save tech and maybe try to delete something next turn. And I'm going to build another pasture on these sheep so I can get more luxuries to keep my cities happy. Now I've got two more production. I think I'm going to go ahead and destroy the Great Lighthouse so that I can build a fishing boat in this city and so it can be fed a little bit better. Um, but yeah, that's the end of my turn. I have no more production. I do have units that can move. I have a scout here. Uh, but... Nothing to be done. So I might be able to take Antium next turn as well, because they're undefended. I should totally be keeping uh, a Swordsman card in my bank, although I did just build a Swordsman. Uh, let's go to the next turn. All right, I have a Settler. Let's settle coastally, I think. Yeah. Let's see how that does. I need to be careful. I probably want to start like unlocking things like Courthouses soon, which allow you to... Um, Lower the maintenance of your cities. Oh, I want to go harvest these sheep too. Yeah, but like courthouses are great because they allow you to lower your maintenance. Oh, okay. Barracks is, are being put down. So that's actually like really bad. Um, barracks essentially let you mass produce infantry. It's expensive, but it can be done. So I'm probably going to have to get my own barracks now. Uh, so I need to find construction in the tech tree. All right, let's have a look here. A lumber mill is quite good. Plus 25% strength on an axeman is like pretty decent. I can If I control here, I isolate Antium. Let's go ahead and see if we can conquer Antium before they can get a unit in it. Um, we're going to continue to explore over here. I'm going to settle another city. It's like a decent location for one. I could play Hunter Gatherers, which would lose me in Slave. I'm going to go ahead and destroy Hunter Gatherers to get a little bit more tech, which will allow me to play horseback riding for tech 
and then get horseman and then I can play a horseman in Beijing and then he's in a position to like reinforce wherever I need. I could also get an archer for defense reasons. Now I need to I need to kind of balance my economic my stuff here. I think building roads is like super valuable. It lowers the maintenance cost of your empire, which maintenance is so painful at certain points in the game. I could play paganism. The nice thing about paganism is uh, Berserker is like an easy burn, in my opinion. So I tell you what, I'm going to save Berserker for, as a burn card next turn. Am I working any flatland tiles? Let's see, where could I move this pop? Am I not allowed to move you? Is the game just not letting me move population? I don't understand. Let's draw some cards. I could play God King. Divine Decree is pretty good, to be honest with you. Makes uh makes things happier. Uh, a farm on these berries actually is based. So because that's plus one food there. And it'll also give me two food in the bank and I can sell those or use them to grow my cities. I'm going to sell them for now. Is there anything I worth buying? Probably not. I might need to start buying luxuries to feed my cities or build more monuments to, to make my cities happier. This is actually, uh, this is a, a game where I've had the most amount of cities ever, um, which is kind of an interesting position to be in. I seriously need to pick up some luxuries, so I'm going to have to play very very carefully here because i don't think i can really upgrade my economy anymore um because my cities are becoming extremely unhappy and um, that's going to mean that i need to go for philosophy here so if i look at beijing right 40 percent yield penalty it's losing nine food um i'm gonna burn berserker because i don't think it's a very good card i don't think it's very useful for me in my situation i don't think i want swordsman or spearman or workshops so i'll leave metal working warehouses are just always good but i can't afford to build them right now um, i need philosophy so I can get courthouses because Heliopolis, for example, has like major problems. So I'll play a courthouse in Heliopolis, which should lower the maintenance cost of that city significantly. Uh, I'll attack Antium and potentially inherit a barracks infrastructure. I don't know if I don't know if Harbor's worth burning here. Do I have any more berry tiles? Like, am I? is it worth it for me to build farms here? I mean, my cities are so huge. Do I need more food? That's my question. I'm kind of sitting here asking myself. Unfortunately, marble is not a luxury. Let's sell off our food. Marble is probably worth keeping. Is there a card I'd like to burn? Let's draw one card. Yeah, I'll, I'll burn healing ritual next turn. So I'll save that. It's, it's good to have like cards that you think you might burn. Although I could burn Har Although Harbor is quite useful because it adds resources for trade go ahead and extract those luxuries perfect to keep these cities from being completely miserable now i had another scout you i actually want you to stand on this sheep next turn so i can keep extracting luxuries with my scouts really really good i i, I like the diversity of how like units are used like you can use scouts to extract resources you can use military units to attack things i'm surprised at how few units the ai has right now um, i'm so much more used to them actually being like hyper aggressive uh, to be honest with you, I'm so used to being like out of my depth completely. But I can pressure Neapolis here as well. Now, it could come back to bite me. In fact, I'm going to keep Axemen in my bank just because it's good to have them. Granary and Warehouse are also just really good infrastructure cards. So, a problem I have right now is my production is terrible. You know, no matter how good... Oh, really, I can't use that road. Kill that scout, please. Mr. Horseman. There's a Roman scout running through my borders. Need to kill it with the Horseman. So, a, a lot of automated stuff happens between the turn. Looks like they're fighting over here to the north. And I might be able to grab myself Antium. Perfect. Neapolis may fall. I'm, I'm so surprised they're not building military. I'm so used to the AI. The AI are usually like super aggressive and actually a really difficult fight. I did manage to sell some horses. That's good. So I picked up some gold from that. We're at 59 points. Turn 11. This is honestly, <laughs> this is the best game I've ever played. <laughs> What's happening? Horsemen are good. I'm going to put a horseman into... Sh well, let me think about this. I've got 10 hammers here to play with. I could get riding. Nothing in here gives me happiness. I would get military tactics and library would give me culture and science. I don't have any stone. I could buy a stone. If I buy a stone for two gold, then I can play riding for one science, pick up a library, play a library for one stone in the capital, get an extra culture. Um, I need to be careful about how much I play here. 
I think I'll play a warehouse in Shanghai and then play a horseman to bring that city's population down slightly so it uses less luxuries. Any cheap luxuries? I'll get two salt to be fed to my cities. But there's actually some cheap wool here too. Actually, there's a ton of cheap luxuries. So I'll just have them in the bank for now. Uh, I'm going to get these scouts to continue to extract more luxuries because luxuries are just, I'm struggling. I'm struggling for luxuries. Uh, I'll put a luxury in here. I'll give a granary to Heliopolis so the city can continue to grow, although the city doesn't need growth, to be honest with you. It needs uh, it needs happiness. Where's my monument card? For real. I need a, mo I need a monument. Uh, I'm going to burn healing ritual for extra production, and then I will play a fishing hut card because just plus one food in the city seems pretty based. My scout to wait a turn. I don't know what button I press to tell him to stay still, but I'll just go to the next unit. Go ahead and take Neapolis. Go ahead and claim Antium, capturing more cities. Now, we do have to be careful because our supply lines are getting very long and very expensive. Let's get a horseman in on Rome. Yeah, there's a famine happening in Antium, sadly, because of the sadness. Can I move this pop here to a two-food tile? No, I can't prevent it. Let's give them some food to prevent the famine. Uh, we'll give them a luxury so they're not completely obliterated. And yeah, it's just like a really, really satisfying, like a whole bunch of like placing things where they go and shuffling around, putting cards into your hand and then burning cards to get rid of them. Because when you destroy a card, it's gone from the game forever for you. Um, but that means you draw the cards that you want a lot faster. Okay, Rome actually has units out now. But we managed to take, we've managed to take three cities by force here this game, which is literally unheard of. Most of my games, I've been on two cities. Um, but it's actually quite hard to manage this many. And my production is so low. Uh, enslave population, for sure. I'm going to play Define Decree. I'm going to enslave Shanghai, because that city's just having unhappiness problems. I could burn a card. I think I'll build a settler in Xi'an to uh, get another city out. I'm going to burn double time. As much as I like movement, I don't think it's necessary. And I just need a card to burn. I will build a monument, and ideally, if I could hit three cities, I will. No, do I want to burn double time? Let's play Organized Labor first. Man, all these cards are so good. It's so hard to justify burning them. That's the place where I have a lot of trouble. Let's sell two marble at least. But the thing is, I have to thin out my hand. Let's let's burn Mobilize. Right? It, it's nice because it lets you move a unit this turn that you build it, but I think I just need to get rid of it. I need to get rid of that card, basically, to keep getting science and thinning my deck a little bit. I want to play a Monument. And I want it to be a high impact monument. A monument right here hits three cities. That's a high impact monument. So let's play a monument. It'll cost me one marble right here, but it hits three cities. So that's huge. That's three luxury resources from that monument, basically. And I have another three city monument over here. So that's also big. Divine favor. So this is an axe man. Could potentially be going up against my horseman. I'm going to play divine favor on my horseman to give him extra combat strength. So he's up to 14 now. And now I should feel a little bit safer actually attacking Rome. And then I'm going to claim Neapolis. God. Ooh, I'm at minus gold. That's dangerous. Let's sell some resources. Uh, let's have a look at our supply lines. And see if we can't make this simpler. I can't build road through enemy territory. That's devastatingly painful. Hmm, that's rough. What I can do is this, is make a road triangle here, which might lower the maintenance cost of stuff to the left. Let's play a 25% strength boost on this horseman as well. So he's up to 17 strength, so that means he has 17 health and 17 attack. Which I think I need to start playing lumber mills and actually working production tiles. Like, you actually just don't need this much food. Like, you actually just don't. So you can move your population around based on your needs. Like, this city absolutely does not need this much food. I'm going to put some people inside the city. Oh, I guess that doesn't work. I don't have any money to draw cards. You can use two production to draw. Oh, there's construction. Construction could be huge. There it is, Colosseum. That's huge. Getting access to Colosseum now. I'm going to save that. I need to, I need to start playing Colosseums because my happiness is my problem, right? And that's why my yields are so low. That's why I'm losing gold. Um, now, some of my units are going to run into supply issues. Uh, let's go ahead and harvest more luxuries. Ba boom Th Those will get auto-fed to like demanding cities, but that's okay. We have another horseman. Let's position it beside Rome again. We're like on the offensive here. This is incredible. And uh, yeah, you can see supply line. This guy is going to... He 
see we have unrest and not produce hammers and gold yeah so we need to kind of like stabilize our economy we've like expanded like to an absurd degree we've got spearmen here i'm gonna go ahead and fortify i need a unit for heliopolis next turn to protect it because there's potentially two units bearing down upon it a spearman and a warrior so like expanding like this is really really dangerous because you can only play so many cards per turn oh we managed to capture rome potentially okay that's huge if i can snipe it now i'm gonna have to deal with some aggression from the north i mean at the same time i also don't care too much about these cities a little bit of unrest i can yoink rome right now which is like absurd we have a Colosseum, so happiness shouldn't be as much of a problem for me. We have a little bit gold in the bank. Let's play in Beijing, happiness, because we just Beijing is just miserable right now. We, in fact, we need to buy luxuries to get that back. And they even sent them to the wrong kind of cities, annoyingly. Well, we bought luxuries, but the city shouldn't be getting miserable anymore. And I can put more population if I could, if it would let me move them. I don't really understand why it won't let me move population sometimes. Um, like, theoretically, I should be able to. Um, we definitely need a horseman over here. I'm missing a horse. Let's buy a horse. Build a horse in Heliopolis. You're fortified there. I definitely need another monument. Happiness across my empire. That's perfect. Warehouses are good, but I don't need them right now. Can I burn a card? Do I have use for a pastures anymore? I could use one more pasture. So I'm going to save that pasture for next turn because that's another luxury card. Also, what is this? This looks like gems and more luxuries. Okay, I definitely also want to save my mining card. Potential to pick up a lot of luxuries over here on this side of the map, which I'm very, very happy about. Uh, I can claim Rome, right? Oh, maybe maybe horse units can't actually claim. Let's get more units onto Rome to prevent any recaptures. Um, I could keep the Great Wall in my bank or I could burn it. I could burn the Great Wall and I think I will because instead I could get Chichen Itza. And Chichen Itza will reduce my food consumption in all my cities, which will make it easier for me to not to justify not working food, like in this city. I want to move the pop around in here. I, don't, I wonder why it won't let me. Is there something I need to click on? Oh, there it is. R shows map resources. Yeah, so what I want to do is I don't need as much food in here, so I'm going to put people in the city. I don't want it to starve, but... Um... Put some people into the capital and look at the happiness bar is going to fill back up now and then the city's yields are going to stop being tanked. That's great. Okay, I think we've managed to stabilize our economy in a big way. And that is all you fortify. I think it is sleep. No. Ooh, destroy pillage. Oh, you can raise a city and get a ton of gold. I had no idea you could do that. I thought you had to capture them. Oh my God, raising is based. You get vict- Oh, you don't have to keep them. Oh, uh, okay. I've just learned something about this game. You don't have to keep the enemy cities. You can actually just burn them. That's huge. That's a game changer. Shanghai really needs a Colosseum. So I'm hopeful. I'm thankfully I'm holding Heliopolis with a single unit, but there are spearmen and stuff coming, and like there's constantly more and more units coming. I really need barracks, and I need a unit that I can spam from a barracks. Antium needs to grow, so I'm gonna have to start putting food into Antium. I think. Get all my luxuries in, and then they'll get auto-distributed to the cities in need. There you go. Whole bunch of growth. All these great things happening. Okay, so I have my pasture. I have my road. I have all these things. What I want to do is grab food, put a couple of points into Antium. I want to draw some cards. Okay, Archer is actually really good here. Um, I can play a card in the barracks. Boom. Which is, is kind of like a warehouse. It doesn't actually use the city's production queue. So now I could play another unit in here if I draw one. Another archer, because it's put at the bottom of my deck, because of how the barracks works. It's put at the top of my deck, and now I got two or more units in here. I can move this axeman to intercept this spearman, because I have archers defending now. We've got two axemen and a scout. I think I can actually win this fight. I can continue to push on Rome. Let's keep boosting this guy, because he's up to 18 combat strength now. Pasture. I want to settle the city. Boom. And then play the pasture, because that's extra luxuries, which will help me sustain my cities. There's no stone in the bank, or I would play a library. I don't think double time is very useful. I'm going to go ahead and destroy it, because my empire is just like, it's not necessary. I want to hold on to the mine. Well, I don't need the mine right now, to be honest. I'm going to play another lumber mill. The city does not need as much food as it's working. Let's have a look. Courthouse actually would be really, really good for me here. I'd need a stone. I'm going to bank courthouse. Courthouse lowers the maintenance cost here, city. So if I click here, 
you see the way this says uh, four, two, five, two, etc. The court has this lowers that. Um, and also, I'm going to bank road. Yeah, I think I'll let these cards bleed out of my hand. Keep the horses going. We're up to 88 points, so we're actually doing like really, really well. Any orders? Ah, harvest. Ah. Insufficient resources. What do you mean? Oh, it takes two. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll burn a harbor then for a little bit of extra luxuries. The luxuries are just, just like, they're so important. Can I draw a crop card? Divine favor? This is not a crop card. It's actually a great card. Ooh, enslave. Perfect. That'll give me the hammers now to come up here. More luxury. Get a little bit of gold. It's all coming up millhouse, baby. Um, yeah, you just need to stay fortified until I can get a reinforcing unit. I actually really badly need a reinforcing unit over there. Heliopolis might fall. It might be okay. It's not worth that many victory points. It's like worth like five victory points. I think I can get those five victory points elsewhere. I'm curious to see if I'll be able to push through this Roman uh, military block here. 12, 8. 18, 8. Okay. Ooh, he managed to push the city. Okay, so Heliopolis is under threat. Could get raised or captured or... Who knows? I mean, to be fair, I took it for free with an Axeman, so I don't really care if they take it. If I can hold it, I'm happy, but I don't care if I can't. I am losing one gold per turn, which is a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully courthouses will help me with that, because I do have the marble to build the courthouses. I just need the stone. Otherwise, it takes six hammers, so... If I could, if I could have found stone this game, it would have been so good, but I never did. Uh, let's have a look here. Farm, temple, axeman. Well, temples are great because I can build them for basically for nothing. Metalworking? I have no I have no iron or copper. It would be good to have swordsmen though. Swordsmen are really, really strong. I don't know if I want another settler. You know what? I can just get another settler. I, I am in the position that I can do that. I mean, I suppose if I have swordsmen, axemen kind of become obsolete. So I'll delete axemen now. I'll produce a swordsman. I want to do a courthouse though. And I want to do a temple. Shanghai is a little bit unhappy and it has a holy site so that would mean it would get one culture per citizen working the city city hex and a culture a happiness per holy site so that seems pretty good to give the city two happiness that's two luxury resources I don't need to feed into the city uh, I'm going to build a swordsman and that went up the top of my draw pile so I will get another swordsman next turn I'm going to draw that swordsman and play it because I just I need a swordsman and then I'll feed Beijing to bring it back up to seven pop uh, I need to look what's my most expensive city looks like Guangzhou Am I going to play a courthouse in there? Oh, I already built something. Well, I'll save the courthouse for next turn then. I have enough production to build a road to Neapolis to lower its sustainment cost, which I think is good. I have a bunch of units ready to work. Ability on cooldown, so you can't do anything. Can you attack here? I'll divine favor you. Then can you attack here? Might be able to clear these guys out with two attacks. Don't have a use for farm. Tempted to burn it. Um, but I don't have the money to draw. Producing two food is quite good, though. Oh, that's a Mamluk, not a Spearman. Oh, that's way less threatening. I thought that was a Spearman. This guy's on nine health. My two archers could probably take him, but I'll just retake that with a swordsman soon. I'm going to have my archers fortify, because they're best... Uh, they get plus 25% terrain defense, and I think they only take half damage when they're on the attack. So they're quite good at defense. They're not amazing. But they do the job. Gather resources plus strength. Yeah, it looks like I'm getting a bit of pushback, but I am holding pretty comfortably. There we go. There we go. I wish I had more barracks to mass produce units. But we're just in a bit of a, a struggly kind of place. Although, we're actually really close to a win here. So I'm not too worried. Like, it's turn 16. It's pretty late into the game. We could potentially push gunpowder. If we take out the check out the tech tree, gunpowder is... Uh, I would need to go engineering, gunpowder, and then I could go musketman. That would be huge. I mean, I think I can win before musketman. Engineering, gunpowder, musketman. <laughs> Why not? Let's get musketman. So musketman have 35 combat strength before being buffed. Just FYI. I'm going to put a temple into uh, Jian because the city's a little bit unhappy. And my musketman now. I'm going I'm to be able to build a musketman every single turn on this barracks here. Just to like put that in perspective. There's a horseman there. Let's claim this tile to push back the borders. Man, there's no stone on this map. It's crazy. It's, it's legitimately crazy. I wish I'd, I wish I'd gone for a, a harbor build. There would have been so many more resources available. Damn. 
Now, sometimes you make decisions. I'm curious. Units can't go into the water. No, I don't think so. Um, I don't think else I can really do this turn. I do need to use some food or something. I'll put one food into Guangzhou. I'll put one food into Jian to grow the city. I'll put two food into Shanghai. I'll put one food into Neapolis. I'll put a food into Antium so I can keep building units there. And then just kind of clear this out. I, I need to keep this courthouse because my gold income is like really bad. Um, military tactics is probably worth saving. Forts, I think I can burn. Yeah. At this point, granary and fishing huts are probably burnable. And I'll just draw a card. Oh, that's Muscomin. Whoops. Draw a card. Three cost, ideally. Ah, 25% strength. I'll give this to the horseman again. So now this is like a plus 75% strength horseman. So that's a really, really, really nice, nice horseman. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, see what we can do. Harvest more luxuries. Hey. You move there. Is this a warrior and a mamluk? Attack the warrior. Where's my swordsman? Pressure that city. I could claim another barracks, but that would require me to burn a lot of food every turn. You could do some really, really crazy plays in this game, which I really, really like. I'd like to take the barracks. So let's see if it can be done. If I can yoink this barracks, it's huge for me. And let's end our turn. I, we might win next turn if we grow enough pop, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. We did well there and we killed. Did we die? Ah, uh, I think we might have died. Unfortunate. But we did pressure towards Heliopolis pretty well. Outcomes. This is just like an incredibly lucky game. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. Oh, brilliant. Oh man, look at those resources flowing in. They're going to get distributed now, but... Like, we managed to get our happiness problem under control. Oh, we love you. Plus two victory points. That's really, really good. If you get a surplus of happiness, it can generate you extra... Uh, extra victory points. All, all the distributed... Ah, there we go. We won. Nice. So that's Hexarchy. Uh, this was like probably not the best example game. But it kind of gives you an idea of what the game is about, right? You, you're, I, in my opinion, it's probably better played in multiplayer, like in a casual level. I, I might see if I can get the Yogg's cast to play. But yeah, go check out the Kickstarter. There'll be a link to the Kickstarter in the description of the video. Uh, I'm going to be backing the game. And I hope you guys consider it too. It's only $15 for the most basic package and $30 if you want to play it right now. And I think it's a, it's a fun, interesting little distraction. Like you might get like 10, 20 hours out of this game, which I think is pretty reasonable for the price you're going to pay. Uh, I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.